This is part 60 of ASP.NET Core tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to implement global exception handler in ASP.NET Core MVC. Before we do that, let's see what happens if there is an unhandled exception within our application. For that, I'm going to throw a new exception from this detail section method of our home controller. To throw an exception, let's use the throw keyword. And the exception message that we want is error in details view. There we go. We see the list of employees as expected. Now, if I click on the view button, notice we have what is called the developer exception page. We discussed developer exception page in detail in part 13 of this ASP.NET Core tutorial. This page is similar to the yellow screen of death in classic ASP.NET. Notice we have complete information about the exception that has just occurred. There is an exception in the details action method of our home controller on line number 33. And here is the exception message. Now we are able to see this developer exception page because if we take a look at the configure method within our startup class, by the way, we use this method to set up our application's HTTP request processing pipeline. Notice if the environment is development, we have plugged in the developer exception page middleware and we have set the ASP.NET Core environment variable to development. So at this point, if we run this application and if there is an unhandled exception, we see this developer exception page. As the name implies, the developer exception page middleware must be used only on the development environment. Using this page on a non-development environment like production, for example, is a security risk as it contains detailed exception information that could be used by an attacker. Also, this exception page does not make any sense to the end user. Now, let's see what's going to happen if we run this application by changing the ASP.NET Core environment variable value to production. Let's go back to the list view and then click the view button. Notice now we do not see the developer exception page. Other than displaying that there is a 500 HTTP error, we do not see any other information. Error 500 means there was an error on the server which the server did not know how to handle. This default page is not very useful for the end user. We want to handle the exception and redirect the user to our own custom error view which is more useful and meaningful. If the environment is development, then we want to use the developer exception page middleware. If it's a non-development environment like staging or production, for example, then we want to use a different piece of middleware and that is use exception handler. As you can see from the IntelliSense, there are four overloaded versions of this method. I'm going to use this overloaded version which takes the error handling path. Now, if there is an unhandled exception, we want the error controller to be able to handle that exception. So we specify forward slash error. We already created this error controller in our previous videos in this series. At the moment, within the error controller, we only have one action method that responds to the path error forward slash any non-success HTTP status code like 404, for example. Within this error controller, we need another action method that knows how to handle an unhandled exception. This is going to be a public method, returns I action result, and let's call the method error. We want this action method to be executed if the route path is slash error. So let's use attribute routing for that. Not just authenticated users, even anonymous users should be able to get to this action method. So let's decorate it with allow anonymous attribute. Let's bring in the required namespace. We'll discuss this attribute in detail in our upcoming videos when we implement authentication and authorization. Now inside this action method, we write code to retrieve the exception details, log those details somewhere like a database table, an external file or Windows Event Viewer and then redirect the user to a custom error view. So to retrieve the exception details, I'm first going to create a variable. Let's call it exception details. To get the exception details, we're going to use http context.features.get. 
eye exception handler path feature interface. We can now use this exception details object to get the exception details like the path that caused the exception and notice this error property returns the exception object. So we could use it to get the exception message, stack trace, etc. For now, let's use view bag object to pass these exception details to a custom error view that we'll create in just a bit. So view bag dot exception path equals exception details dot path. Similarly, view bag dot exception message equals exception details dot error dot message. And then finally, view bag dot stack trace equals exception details dot error dot stack trace. Finally, let's return a custom error view. Let's call the view error. We don't have this view yet. Let's create it. I'm going to add it to the shared folder. We want to add a razor view. Let's name it error.cshtml. In the interest of time, I'm going to paste some HTML here. As you can see, this is straightforward HTML. So basically, we are saying an error occurred while processing your request. The support team is notified and we are working on the fix. And we also provided an email address if they want to contact us for any reason. Now, let's include an HR element. Below this horizontal line, we want to display the exception details that we are passing to this error view using the view bag object. So I'm going to paste another piece of HTML here. And again, this is straightforward HTML. We're basically using an H3 element to display this heading exception details. And then on each div element here, we have three div elements. On each of the div elements, we're using bootstrap alert and alert danger classes for styling. And then we are first displaying exception path and then the exception message, and finally, stack trace. So let's save all these changes and take a look at the browser. First, let's go back to the list view and then click the view button. Notice, now we see our custom error view. We have an unhandled exception and it is caught by the error action method within our error controller. The exception details are passed to our error view and our error view is displaying those details. We have the exception path, exception message, exception stack trace. Remember, we will never ever display exception details on a production environment like this. We are doing it here for demonstration purpose. In a real world application, we will log the exception details. Maybe we'll log them to a database table or to a file. So a developer could review them and provide a fix if required. We'll discuss logging exceptions in our upcoming videos. Three simple steps to implement Global Exception Handler in ASP.NET Core MVC. Step one, add the exception handling middleware to our HTTP request processing pipeline by using this extension method, use exception handler. If there is an unhandled exception, our application looks for error controller. So our obvious next step is to implement the error controller. From this error controller action method, we are returning error view. So our next and final step is to implement our custom error view. That's it in this video. Thank you for listening.